From the author that has appeared in Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, and GigaOM, it's Larry Chiang. CS23E Lecture 14, we are revisiting the customer development cycle. The customer development cycle, which is right there in that beginning part uh, area to the left of the chasm. Customer development cycle. Now, this, I believe, is Silicon Valley's largest and most obvious mistake that actually nobody's even talking about. And that is this, when you are a sales professional, such as myself, succeeding in selling something that's hyper innovative, your close ratios, your ability to, to get people to sign paperwork is gonna be at a fraction of a percent. Now that's for a sales professional selling something that's super innovative. Now, when you're selling something that isn't a slam dunk and there's risk involved and you're not a sales professional, you're gonna fail super majority of the time. It's like, it's, it's actually like its own cliche example of getting a tech founder to try to sell something that they made that is super innovative that hasn't yet been adopted. I mean, there are literally nine strikes against you. And if you don't know baseball, that's a, that's a hat trick. That's almost a golden sombrero when you strike out four times in one game. That's, you're starting off with 12 strikes against you in one at bat. And these are some of the strikes. One, sales, isn't sales skills aren't in necessarily intrinsically inside of a CS major. Uh, and that's why the startup is dead that we're trying to work on as a, as a cadaver. That startup had 12 strikes against it too. So that's why we're editing it right now. Selling in the right part, the correct region, absolutely will help you. And that's why we're revisiting Customer Development Cycle Lecture 14. This is figure 6.2 uh, in chapter 6 of Four Steps to the Epiphany. Let me repeat that, Stephen Blank, Four Steps to the Epiphany. The reason that three to five million dollars in venture is still not enough money to buy traction is sales and selling uh, are traction. And so if you're not selling or getting traction, no amount of venture money is going to buy you that traction. Sales gets you that traction. Sales gets you distribution. Distribution gets you sales. Remember and note that venture capital itself is not a form of distribution. It's a form of validation. It is not in and of itself distribution and pay attention to uh, my friend Jeremy's tweet stream where he works at uh, a major media company and when startups pitch Jeremy Toman T-O-E-M-A-N uh, on Twitter it's Jay Toman startups will pitch him saying this venture capitalist validated our product will you now buy our product That's why you're editing right now, because the startup uh, that is a cadaver died because they're hoping to get this validation. And remember the 12 strikes against you? There are a, literally a dozen strikes against you when you're trying to sell in this portion of the chasm in figure 6.2. If you haven't read, uh, if you don't own the manual of Silicon Valley, Four Steps to the Epiphany, Uh, get that book, Four Steps to the Epiphany in Figure 6.2, which is the customer development cycle, and you are in the red zone, the danger zone. This is the red zone, this is the danger zone. Silicon Valley sales virgins will try to sell and attempt their first sale in this red zone, in this area to the left of the chasm. And when I say sales virgins, virgin meaning person who has not uh, done it before. 
Um, if the phrase virgin or popping your cherry or busting your hymen uh, makes you unhappy, you should be unhappy because sales virgins are dying. Now, first time founders oftentimes, according to Steve Blank, page 99 of Four Steps to the Epiphany, talks about how sales founders oftentimes their first experience selling something is selling the thing that they co-founded. Yikes, not a good plan, not a good approach, which is why CS183E for edit is so uh, important because you're getting and building sales muscles. You're building your editing muscles. You're building, uh, you're, you're, not, you're not divergenizing and you're not trying to pop your own cherry with something that you coded. You're uh, getting sales and distribution and traction for this dead startup, this cadaver that we are practicing on. Like doctors at Stanford Medicine, we don't practice on grandma or we don't practice on a newborn startup infant. We practice on cadavers. Here we go. Startup death spiral. So many founders want to outsource sales and selling to a VP of sales. I used to actually blame this brand name Silicon Valley uh, venture firm for firing 100% of its founders on its websites two years straight. So for two years straight, every founder that was featured on this VC's website, they would fire. And I know I shouldn't be laughing. Uh, it's serious stuff. But I mean, 100%. It isn't 60% or 30% or a quarter. It's 100% of founders would get fired. In fact, the founder of the venture firm would say, I regularly enjoy firing founders. Who goes on, I mean, what, why would Don Valentine go on record saying that? Okay, so that's startup death spiral and it kills founders dead. And this is from the same book, Four Steps of Epiphany. And this is the crux of the matter, which is why editing and CS183E is so critical at this inflection point of Silicon Valley uh, because my two friends, okay, my two friends want you to edit a cadaver before you jump in and become a purposeful accidental entrepreneur or a startup founder. So killing startups dead is what happens when you don't practice customer development in the correct part. So I recommend that you write down those URLs that are staring at you in the face, which is bit.ly s blank 710 bit.ly s blank 711 bit dot ly slash s blank seven one two seven one three seven one four so you should be scared that i've memorized startup death spirals url links because i recite and regurgitate the best and most genius stuff so what you're looking at right here is page 30 of four steps to the epiphany page 30 which is the customer development cycle. And this is the other piece of news. A lot of CS majors, they can't sell a bottle of water to a person dying of thirst in Death Valley. So you're gonna prematurely pivot away from something that was innovative and awesome just because your founders couldn't sell. This happens all the time. This happens all the time where when we try to sell something that we coded and we don't get 100% of the sale every time, which is actually impossible, we don't go back and sell another prospect and we don't work our sales pyramid. What we do is we crumble, we take it personally, and then we stop trying to sell. And this is a negative, it's a flat spin out to see. That's what startup death spiral is on a larger scale with venture money, which is where we hire a VP of sales who has a hard time selling anyway, something that can't sell itself. So startup death spiral is culminates in the fact that 
CS founders have a really hard time selling uh, as salespeople have a hard time selling. Now you're gonna try to sell in the left part of the chasm. I'm here to tell you that me and my 88 of an IQ know that this is trouble. And look up page 30 and that, that pivot area is what happens in the, the premature pivot that's why this startup that you're editing, that's why it died. And so that's the exercise of editing is getting distribution and selling something that you yourself did not code. And then you realize, hey, selling isn't so easy. Remember, even in technical sales for a Fortune 500 company, and which I was enthusiastically and passionately participating in selling water treatment chemical, the close ratio is phenomenally low. The percentage of people that buy significant amounts of chemical is still significantly low. And the innovation in treating water, a lot of people still don't treat water. In fact, if you look at the fountains at 2895 Sand Hill Road, they actually don't treat their fountain. They've got an algae and a foam issue. And it's sort of funny to me, but it's sort of not funny and I'm laughing because I'm crying on the inside, which is that water doesn't get treated in a Silicon Valley VC's fountain, so don't laugh and mock plant managers for not treating their own water. Selling in sales is tough, tough work, even on Main Street. And now you're gonna try to do customer development cycle on the left part of the chasm with sales virgins. I think you've got a recipe for disaster. We are rolling, rolling, rolling. Death is everywhere. Fear is also everywhere. Before successes, before CS183E, there's a lot of fear. And that's why death is everywhere. Because the original founders, they didn't want to even try to sell because they folded. And fear, fear is everywhere because there's a huge lack of success. Last time I checked, the fatality rate is still at around 80%. So this is the BJ Fogg diagram, and with a couple of small successes comes your fear minimization. And that's what these things are meant to do, to practice. There's no pressure in working on a cadaver. When a Stanford med school student who went to uh, Brown undergrad or Yale undergrad is now at Stanford Med, they practice on a cadaver. You can't kill a cadaver. That cadaver is dead. And that's what... It, it, there's no fear of killing a cadaver. That's why we're editing a cadaver. Make sense? By lecture 14, ding, light goes on, right? I'm not even joking when I'm telling you that when you're a YC founder and you're, if you fail at it, your default is to go to Harvard Business School. And guess what you're gonna think? You're going to think, oh, I don't need to go sell because I've got uh, a piece of paper with the HBS 2 plus 2 program or the GSB 2 plus 2 program, which is ass, which is uh, I can just go to business school in case my startup doesn't take off. And remember what Paul Graham said, your startup takes off because the founders make it take off. So why would you make it take off if you've got this coupon the safety net, which is why this picture very much applies, which is I've got the safety net of I can go to HBS, or I can go to GSB, or I can go to Stanford GSB. The original GSB is at University of Chicago. So I could go to HBS or GSB on the 2 plus 2 program, which is I work two years, and then I go to business school two years. And the work two years part, what could be better? for HBS to admit somebody who got into a program that's actually harder to get into than HBS, which is YC. That's why we're editing this YC startup. That's why we're editing this cadaver, because it's just but when you don't, when you've got a safety net. Safety nets work opposite of the way that they're supposed to. The reason safety nets work opposite the way that they're supposed to is after you go to HBS or GSB, all this distribution work will still be waiting for you. Now, this diagram shows you 
that once you succeed in doing sales distribution and traction work, that your fear gets reduced. So this is what BJ Fogg came up with in the, uh, the behavior analysis and how success has its own form of momentum. That's the conclusion that I gleaned from it. Uh, you can feel free to share with me your thoughts with why hope grows uh, in that green column. Puppies. Puppies are small mammals that are cute and furry and cuddly. Well, Bixby's actually a pillow pet sheep, but uh, Shog Deep is a puppy. Now, if I say to you distributed ledgers, distributed power, you're bored out of your mind. Roller Chang. Roller Chang? Is that like some kind of sequel to blockchain? I don't get it. And you know what? Roller Chang is actually awesome and funny because it has the double entendre of roller chain, which is bicycle chain. Oh, we can cross the chasm because we're doing something that's actually old, which is removing friction from blockchain. I mean, that sounds like a pitch that's cool. So maybe let's just set aside roller chain and let's talk about distributed ledgers. Do you, no, I don't want to listen about. I don't want to listen to distributed ledgers or distributed power. Power Grid used to work this way. Now we're doing distributed power with like fuel cell, and this is going to reinvent the Power Grid. Boring, puppies. That's what converts. So if you're doing uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises and you're trying to get distributed computing, cloud-based from server-based Hewlett Packard servers to cloud-based HPE Enterprise, what are you gonna use? Are you gonna use uh, Booth Babes? No, you're not allowed to use Booth Babes anymore. You gotta use a puppy which brings in female executives to then play. That's what puppies is and that's why we're editing this cadaver and that's what we're practicing doing customer development cycle using puppies. I'm not joking, seriously. Pup Tim the Beaver is the mascot beaver of MIT. Oski's the fluffy cow bear. I'm sorry if you're foreign and you feel as if when you went to the MIT of your third world country that you now have to rely on a puppy to get you traction for your distributed ledger blockchain methodology, which right now no one's using because you haven't made friends with and leveraged a puppy. Brand activation, have you heard of the National Broadcasting Company? They're using a puppy. They actually also have a peacock, which is also another animal. It's not as furry friendly, but I kind of get it. It's a, it's a NBC peacock. And they're trying to do brand activation. That's a top 100 company in the world as far as brand recognition. They're still leveraging puppies. Uber, you think Uber is great on its own? Well, when it was first trying to get traction, they would literally deliver puppies to offices uh, and cute puppies for adoption. So they would DJ in the guag guag guacamole recipe of consumer advocacy truth, which is adopt a pound puppy. And puppies are great for brand activation and puppies can work for you as you're exercising on this cadaver of customer and working your muscles for the customer development. Puppies and more puppies. Puppies help with knowledge activation. Now, when you ask a cal optometry, uh, in this case female, because I kind of know a lot of women. When you ask a female, hey, are you familiar with growth hacking? Growth like growing into traction, hacking like computer hacking. When you ask a cal optometry person, female, are you familiar with growth hacking? Blank stares and complete uh, lackadaisical apathy. Face washes over in a glazed uh, 1,000 yard stare. They are itching to leave. But what if you talk about growth hacking and you bring your
puppy Brady to a party. He's fast asleep. Puppies help with knowledge activation. If there's one thing that you can do as a CS major founder, a CS major chief revenue officer, a CS major CEO, a CS major who's editing CS183E startup, is sell a puppy. Don't actually sell a puppy, but sell access to a puppy. Look at what happened, and this hones in and makes more specific this example of customer development cycle. Look at what Hewlett Packard did with Brady the puppy. Uh, literally put him on a pedestal and threw up a hashtag, the machine, and now people are curious about a hashtag during National Puppy Day about learning distributed systems and how they can work with the cloud program that Hewlett Packard Enterprises does, along with potentially selling a couple HP machines or HP services under HPE. Selling a puppy and using a puppy to do customer development cycle gives you confidence because if they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting a really warm, friendly, and nice puppy. And if they're rejecting a puppy, in this case, shot deep over my shoulder, they're, they're losing out. And that's what you want to have as far as your confidence. Do you guys see the customer development cycle? You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting yourself because you're losing out on a great opportunity to learn about Roller Chang. That's what the customer development cycle is all about, which is DJing your innovation to something that has crossed the chasm. And last time I checked, okay, puppies are definitely very popular and very much to the right of the chasm. That's crossing the chasm. Okay, so people are asking, uh, this is uh, video 12B. People are asking, oh, who's that cute blonde? That's actually an employee of HPE, Rebecca Wisson and she's in a picture with Brady in that picture where they're mo both, both making a face at each other. Uh, so that's so much proof that Brady and puppies help cross the chasm and that Brady and puppies help you do the customer development cycle to help you build and exercise and gain confidence. Cute puppies, cute logo. Cute puppy, right? This is Hubert. He's the uh, Bank of Montreal Harris Bank Lion. And he is Hubert. And he helped Harris Bank get acquired by Bank of Montreal for millions and millions of dollars. Cute puppies, cute logo is super, super critical. Why? Because just like quality, uh, quality code is quality code, double entendre, triple entendre, quality, K-O-A-L-I-T-Y, was actually purchased by Palantir, where their logo is a koala bear. Get it? Koala T, quality code. And they got acquired from Palantir. I don't know what they did, okay? And I'm sure their VC who invested in them they don't know what they did, but if you're a CS major willing to cast aside your dignity and step into Oski the bear and be the mascot, or Red Robin the mascot, or Tim the beaver, or Puddles the Oregon duck, these are all mascots that I'm on a first name basis with, Ted the dogster, if you're willing to step into and be the mascot and be your own fluffy puppy and you're a CS major, you have now crossed over the chasm. Be cute. Oh, that's my friend uh, Jessica and uh, she's a unicorn. <laughs> this selfie makes me laugh. Cute puppies. Do you want to do the customer development cycle? You don't. Look at how many views are on this video. I bet it's a single digit. 
nobody sees, oh, customer development cycle, I'm gonna go ahead and click and then put myself through the pain of hitting myself, hitting my own head up against the wall, trying to sell old people who don't even understand technology. I mean, nobody wants to do the customer development cycle, but if you bring puppies to the party, as exemplified by Amelie, our family dog, and the selfie that she took with my girlfriend, who is a growth hacker, which I had to trick into growth hacking by doing cute puppy maneuvering. She did a one call close uh, for a J-O-B at a major uh, optom optomo optometrical, easy for me to say, right? In an optometry field job, doing eye doctor stuff. One call close uh, because she growth hacked it. Distribution, it matters not only to us engineers, but also people that studied cow optometry. Cute puppies, way more interesting and fun to do than the customer development cycle. That's why I'm putting this game within a game. That's why customer development cycle is initially practiced on the right side of the chasm by connecting up puppies to whatever innovative thing that nobody understands and no one gets. How many times have you heard a founder say, oh, they didn't like our thing, the VCs didn't like our thing, they just didn't get it. It's your fault that people don't get it, okay? I take it personally when a startup becomes bankrupt because I was like, don't you know, why didn't you get CS1A3 edit? Breaks my heart a little bit. And puppies, is really what you're trying to DJ in that second chasm. And that's what the customer development cycle and that's what editing is, is finding your inner puppy and finding an external puppy and combining that distributed ledger blockchain, horrifying labs, blockchain labs, just any string of Y Combinator flavor, no. Remember, CS183E is about polishing up our turds and getting super rich. Pizza, Shalom Bao, and Shih Tzu's. Way more interesting than FICO, cloud compression, over FM video compression, Wi-Fi. Shalom Bao is actually a yummy, yummy treat kind of like a donut, which we use donuts at Nalco Chemical because people didn't compare, couldn't care less about uh, calcium carbonate and NaCl salt and uh, calcium carbonate and how it scales up a boiler or a cooling tower. They just care about donuts. Can you bring two dozen donuts if you were to service our account. And so I had all this engineering knowledge and I wanted to let these maintenance people and the plant manager know about how smart I was because I spent all this time learning about chelates and pH and the likelihood of scale developing on their boiler. They didn't care. You know what they cared about? Can you bring the mother scratching donuts on time on Mondays? Can you bring them for third shift on Thursdays. Third shift is uh, the graveyard shift, midnight to 7 a.m., midnight to 8 a.m. They get off work at 8 a.m. and they go drink. Can you bring donuts at midnight plus 15 minutes? I have a college degree and I had to work the third shift a lot of the time. Got emotional there for a second. We gotta just recoil. Donuts, Shaolong Bao, which is uh, a Chinese dumpling. Shih Tzu's, which I have in spade. Puppies. So our family, uh, the Chang family, did and does customer development cycle. So our family's Chinese. We're from mainland China. During the war, my family moved to Taiwan and they had to make Shaolong Bao because the pots and pans business, uh, we would smelt in the side of a hill, uh, smelt like iron ore, you pour into clay molds, and then out comes a pot or a pan. 
we didn't have that business anymore, so we had to sell Shaolong Bao, which uh, you would just make it and you would make it yummy. And so later, uh, my father's father, uh, my yeye, would uh, start a roller chain business and he self-funded that using Shaolong Bao and it's uh, how I get connected to uh, how stuff works, which is a Shaolong Bao uh, funds your roller chain, like bicycle chain, roller chain, like Chin Yan Chin. Or the Wright brothers uh, would do a bicycle, they would sell bicycles uh, to fund air flight. Elon Musk for SpaceX would fund Tesla and SpaceX with the sale of debit cards. PayPal, actually debit cards out of Omaha. And before that, Yellow Pages, which is what Zip2 was. Uh, Yellow Pages advertising on the internet called Zip2. So this kind of customer development cycle uh, by crossing the chasm from the right, by using two chasms, uh, has been going on since the beginning of time. And I'm emotional enough to let you know that I boiled down all these little basic things because Silicon Valley is still doing it wrong. And that's what CS183E Lecture 14 is about, which is puppies, pizza, and Shaolong Bao. So, Asia Lum tweeted that she enjoyed the DocuSign Dreamforce 2015 party at uh, St. Regis Hotel, which is in San Francisco. It's right across the street from Dreamforce. Uh, disclosure, I am a supermodel uh, for the Starwood related brand, Weston Hotel. So Asia Lum ate pizza at a St. Regis and pizza helped get DocuSign uh, its traction because DocuSign is document signing over PDF uh, to close deals, which I mean, I care about, but you know what I care about more? I care about pizza. I care about pizza in a really, really, really nice hotel, the St. Regis. In fact, I had my girlfriend's birthday party there at the St. Regis and Web2 Summit, I co-hosted the after party at the St. Regis. The hotel is amazing and awesome. Now, if I were to tell you, hey, do you wanna to come to a DocuSign party? You'd be like, uh, no. But if I put it at a St. Regis, would you come then? Mm, yeah, in the ballroom, it's really nice. And I'm gonna have free pizza at 2 a.m. Same thing Dreamforce did at the Westin Hotel. Remember, my FTC disclosure is already done. The Westin Hotel hosted Dreamforce's first conference that Salesforce did. Do you want to learn about Salesforce CRM, where we park your customer relationship management data in the cloud versus a server? I don't know. What if I had Cool in the Gang perform at a concert inside of the Westin Hotel? And I'll even comp your rooms. Will you come as a customer? Heck yes. And then while you're there, okay, you're going to be throwing a couple drinks back. And then your likelihood to DocuSign, pretty high. Keith's the uh, DocuSign CEO. I don't think I know him, although they used to office in downtown Palo Alto. So I've probably eaten free food there before. Uh, I think they did a lunch 2.0 thing back in 2008 or 9. I think DocuSign is next door to my yoga studio um, called Yoga Source. So Keith used pizza and DocuSign crossed the chasm using pizza. And even though DocuSign, I think, sold already, they're still using pizza to try to get more knowledge activation on their product. And they're also trying to brand activate by aligning their innovative document signing, DocuSign, with a great hotel, the St. Regis SF, and a great food product, which num 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 num, very yummy, pizza. So a bit of seriousness with the customer development cycle. 
pizza ovens in San Francisco close at 11.30 p.m. Uh, the entire town actually closes. So if hungry executives are hungry and they pick up a phone, which they actually themselves, they can't execute picking up a telephone and then calling. One, because they're drunk. And two, they wouldn't even call a pizza restaurant sober. They want pizza now. That's why if you pre-order a stack of pizzas, it works every time, 98% of the time. Now, the St. Regis is across the street from Moscone. So is the Hotel W. So is the Westin. Westin number two, which was renamed Park Central Hotel. All these Starwood preferred guest hotels are right across the street. None of them serve food late night. They serve food in the room, but inviting potential customers to come to your room, okay? I don't care if it's the Metropolitan Suite or the Presidential Suite on the 23rd floor. It's creepy to come to my room, but do you want to come to the lobby of the hotel to eat pizza? That's what this picture's of, is this picture's of the lobby of the hotel, the St. Regis Hotel, right across the street from Moscone, which is the ground zero of Dreamforce, Salesforce Conference. So it's a conference within a conference, it's a party within a party, and that's how to do customer development cycle, is you DJ your innovative distributed ledger, blockchain, roller chain, duck nine, FICO score prep business, along with a slice of pizza. And that's how you build confidence by using pizza to rescue that YC cadaver. Hopefully some of these things have dropped your jaw and are making your brain explode right now. So go through and re-watch all these videos. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm joking sometimes, where, I mean, Shog Deep. This is not Brady, by the way. This is Shog Deep. He is super friendly, and you need to borrow or buy something like him. 